The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Also, welcome to those of you joining us through the live stream, whichever camera you're, you're at right now. <laughs> there are some upbeat news stories that may have been buried under the dismal pandemic news. A customer at a small bar and grill in Columbus, Ohio, left a $2,500 tip on a $29 tab. It was left the day before restaurants throughout the state closed as part of the lockdown. A note on the tip explained it was to be split by the serving staff to help them through the difficult times ahead. Then it happened again in Texas. An anonymous customer left a $9,500 tip for the same reason. And then in Florida, another anonymous $10,000 tip was left to help employees just before that restaurant shut down. These are uplifting stories, little lights of hope in the gloom of our lockdown isolation. I was reminded of a phrase I first heard some 25 years ago, random acts of kindness. You remember that? I remember it as a fad. So I was surprised when I Googled it and found an official website, randomactsofkindness.org, and a formal definition. A random act of kindness is a non-premeditated, inconsistent action designed to offer kindness toward the outside world. Apparently, there are groups around the world who are sharing spontaneous acts of kindness. This piqued my curiosity, and I googled another phrase from a couple decades ago, pay it forward. This phrase was popularized in a year 2000 movie by the same name. The idea is for one person to perform random acts of kindness for three strangers without expectation of recognition or reward. Then if each of those people did the same for three more people, their acts of kindness would grow exponentially and positively change our communities, our country, and the whole world. And yes, there's a website. To my surprise, I learned April 28th is Global Pay It Forward Day. You can check it out on globalpayitforwardday.com. It seems there's perhaps a human instinct that urges us to get outside of ourselves and do good for others. So encouraged by my research, I decided to Google, love your neighbor. Sure enough, there were over 415 million search results this simple little phrase is a hot topic. Love your neighbor. Well, it seems simple enough. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. If we all took something of what we get and paid it forward to our neighbors, wouldn't all our lives be enriched? and the world quickly become a better place. 
Wouldn't random acts of kindness help to make us more aware of the needs of those around us and serve to draw us closer together in our common humanity? These are certainly noble aims and at some level almost instinctive to our nature. Yet clearly, there's something wrong with this simple formula. It seems that everywhere we turn today, we encounter chaos, hatred, anger, and violence in almost every aspect of our culture. Certainly, technology has contributed to our present circumstance by empowering narrower and narrower factions such that one can find a reinforcement for almost any constellation of beliefs and behavior. The pandemic, too, has contributed and exposed a forlorn cultural mindset. People in our world are possessed by the desire to get out of life alive. We've been living as if we will not die and deceiving ourselves that we will never die. In the mix of all of this, we're confronted with a harsh reality. We're not on the path toward a uniting kumbaya of neighborly love, but only further down the road of selfishness. I say selfishness because a man is called selfish not for pursuing his own good, but for neglecting his neighbors. So what's wrong with the pay-it-forward formula? What's missing from the random acts of kindness paradigm? What's missing is God. It turns out that we're incapable of truly loving our neighbor unless we also truly love God. These are the two sides of the single coin of love, loving God and loving neighbor. They're inseparable. That inner instinct urging us to get outside ourselves and do good for others originates in the divine spark within us, in the image of God that permeates our being. We were created in love, for love, and by love. God is love. And love consists of acts of goodness outside ourselves for the benefit of others without expectation of reward. But we're incapable on our own of loving as God loves. In speaking of the original fall from grace, St. Augustine noted the impact of sin on our capacity to love. He said the desire to dominate is rooted in our fallen, self-serving, and self-elevating nature. Rather than seek real peace with our brothers and sisters, we claim that our own desires represent peace. But real peace requires justice, and justice requires taking account the dignity and rights of others. In other words, our selfishness tends to get in the way of authentically loving our neighbor. And we cannot overcome that selfishness on our own. We need God's grace. The formula of love needs the grace of God. It's been said that true religion is about falling in love with God. We can't do that. We can't fall in love with God without falling in love with our neighbor. No one can claim to love God if that love doesn't foster a sincere love for others. Yet to love our neighbor is not a simple command. Loving someone doesn't mean simply being kind or nice to them. It doesn't mean turning a blind eye to evil because we don't want to judge or hurt someone's feelings or make somebody angry. 
We need to build upon non with deliberate acts of love and compassion. Again, St. Augustine counsels, love the men you fight, kill only their lie, rest on truth in all humility, defend it, but with no cruelty. Pray for those who you oppose, pray for them, why you correct them. These are some of the Christian tasks we face in loving our neighbor amid our present circumstance. We can only succeed by first loving God and then by opening ourselves to his empowering and transforming grace. Love God. Love your neighbor. Not simple commands. In an age where advances in science and te technology seem to be removing God from our society, we find ourselves increasingly divided and isolated. Not simple commands in any age, really. Yet the teachings of Jesus remain. And in fact, the aim of all scripture, of the entire Bible, is to bring us out of ourselves to love and serve God and our fellow human beings. Perhaps with some prescience, a contemporary French philosopher wrote, Someday, after mastering the wind, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. Then, for the second time in the history of the world, humankind will have discovered fire. The fire of the indwelling spirit of God's love. A love made present for us in the Eucharist we receive today. A love that leads us back to the place where everything is one to the experience of radical unity with all humanity and all creation. The unity of God, who is the great includer of all peoples in all things.